in the late Cretaceous, the region of South America that would one day become modern Argentina was a dramatic land indeed. Teeming with dinosaur life, the Candeleros Formation, located in what is now Patagonia, is famous for its particularly large paleofauna. Huge sauropods towered across the forested swamps and floodplains, whilst as dark a pterosaurs, relatives of the colossal Quetzalcoatlus soared overhead. Large herds of iguanodontian dinosaurs wandered through the woods, whilst abelosaurs, relatives of the well-known Carnotaurus, stalked them from the shadows. With so many large dinosaurs around, a position for a colossal apex predator was open for the taking. And who would come along to take it but a carcharodontosaur? Carcharodontosaurs and their relatives were some of the largest and most fearsome predatory theropod dinosaurs of the entire Mesozoic era. And the dinosaur in question today, Giganotosaurus, was one of the most iconic. For three and a half million years across the Cenomanian stage of the late Cretaceous period, Giganotosaurus was the quintessential apex predator of ancient South America, perhaps one of the largest terrestrial carnivores ever to live. Today, we will be breaking down the key aspects of this marvel of evolution's existence, exploring how it evolved, lived, hunted, and eventually how it was discovered almost 100 million years after its eventual extinction. Sit back and relax as we take you back to the age of the dinosaurs to meet Giganotosaurus, one of the largest apex predators ever to walk the Earth. Now, Giganotosaurus was certainly massive, but just how massive was it? Unfortunately, this is a difficult question to answer reliably due to the incomplete nature of its remains that have been uncovered by scientists in recent years. As it stands today, the most reliable size estimate states that the dinosaur was capable of growing into a length somewhere between 12 and 13 meters, enormous by the standards of present-day carnivores. Debate persists as to whether or not Giganotosaurus was able to match up to the impressive proportions of Tyrannosaurus, Spinosaurus, or Carcharodontosaurus, but there is no doubt that this huge predator was one of the biggest of the big. Like other large theropod dinosaurs, Giganotosaurus was a biped that carried itself horizontally, with the head and tail stretching out more or less straight from its large, muscular torso. The skull, of which around only half has been discovered by science, appears to have been both long and deep, and several of the bones we do have are covered in rugusitae, rough, abrasive textures running along their surfaces. These rugusites travel from the nasal bone to a crest-like protrusion above the eye, which may have supported a ridge-like structure in life. The brain is thought to have been slightly larger than its relatives in the Carcharodontosauridae family. As for the teeth, Giganotosaurus is thought to have possessed around 76 altogether, which were blade-like and perfect for slicing through the flesh of large animals. At their largest, these teeth could grow up to 8 inches long. That's roughly the same size as an average kitchen knife. The skull, in its entirety, is thought to have measured just less than 2 meters long when the animal was fully grown. Giganotosaurus was a tough dinosaur to say the least, and is known to have boasted immense muscles and heavy bones within its neck. These muscles would have been key to the dinosaur being able to rip meat from the bone and perhaps even carrying its kills from one place to another. 
Despite its strength, however, Giganotosaurus is thought to have been rather nimble, but not particularly speedy. When contrasted to other huge theropods of the late Cretaceous, such as the Tyrannosaurs, Giganotosaurus was slightly more slender, with a longer, more tapering tail. We'll discuss the dinosaur's lifestyle and hunting habits in further detail later on in this video. The discovery of Giganotosaurus all started in 1993. This is relatively recent when you consider how well known and represented this dinosaur is in popular culture. This likely has all to do with the fact that this South American predator was massive and was presented to the world as a contender for Tyrannosaurus rex as the ultimate predatory dinosaur. The first bone to be unearthed from this prehistoric apex predator was a tibia, a section of the lower leg by an amateur fossil hunter from Argentina, Ruben Dario Carolini. This is a massive find for a fossil hunter who didn't work directly in paleontology, and one can only imagine just how excited he was to have discovered such a creature. He stumbled across the bone whilst driving a dune buggy through the badlands close to Visha El Chocan in the Argentine province of Nukin in Patagonia. The next step was to have paleontologists from the University of Kamawe attend the scene to assess just what Rubin had discovered. The scientists announced the find the following year in 1994, identifying it as a colossal theropod dinosaur, and an excavation was commissioned to unearth the rest of the skeleton of this potential monster. The scientists attended the scene later that year, and sure enough, a partial skeleton was unearthed in the same region the leg bone was initially dug up. The remains consisted of a partial skull, most of a vertebral column, areas of the pectoral girdles, parts of the pelvis, and some arm and leg bones. The dinosaur was given an official name the year later, in 1995. Giganotosaurus was the genus name, which translates to giant southern lizard. The specific name, Carolinii, was issued in honor of Ruben Dario Carolini, the man lucky enough to bring this animal back into the world. This original skeleton is now located in the Ernesto Bachman Museum in the nearby settlement of Visha El Chocan. To this day, it is one of the museum's most exciting attractions, with an entire room dedicated to the discovery of Giganotosaurus. One of the keys to Giganotosaurus's success was its metabolism, one that allowed very speedy growth to an immense size within individuals of the species. Studies conducted by Reese E. Barrick and William J. Showers in 1999 showed that Giganotosaurus's metabolism was not unlike that of a mammal, albeit slightly closer in nature to those seen in reptiles. It was a warm-blooded animal, capable of regulating its own temperature, which would have allowed it to speed through life, reaching its huge size at a relatively early age. This would have allowed it to hunt equally quickly growing sauropods that it shared the region with. Recent studies on the hind limbs of Giganotosaurus indicate that it was probably an ambush predator, one that would have waited in the shadows or tree line until the very last minute, waiting to strike when it was already too late. Although its limbs were long, the dinosaur itself was rather heavy skeletally. It has been argued that the dinosaur would have been entirely incapable of running at high speeds as an adult, in fact. So, how did Giganotosaurus actually bring down its prey? 
Perhaps, unsurprisingly, the answer to this question can be found in the dinosaur's tremendously powerful bite force. When compared to dinosaurs such as Tyrannosaurus, the dinosaur with the strongest bite force yet known, Giganotosaurus doesn't quite match up, but it evolved to exploit a different technique. Whereas Tyrannosaurus relied upon its heavy jaws to crush the bones of its prey, Giganotosaurus used its sharp teeth to gash and slice at its victims. It would use the long teeth at the front of its jaws to seize and maneuver prey to its liking, in order to raise it from the ground or bring it down to deliver a killing blow. While this was happening, the lower jaw would have firmly held the prey item in place to ensure that escape was quite impossible. Studies have also shown that Giganotosaurus was not a particularly fussy eater, it would have dominated over its ecosystem, able to consume essentially anything it could bring down and fit within its massive jaws. This would have involved young, old, or injured sauropods, but also much smaller animals. Throughout the life cycle of a Giganotosaurus, it would have fed upon ornithopod dinosaurs, reptiles, small mammals, and perhaps even other theropods. Giganotosaurus's home was the Candeleros Formation, whose rocks date back to the Cenomanian stage of the Late Cretaceous. Today, the rocks consist of sandstones, siltstones, and claystones. The latter two represent swampy habitats whereas the former is indicative of riverine conditions. In life, Giganotosaurus would have stormed through the wetlands of South America, perhaps under the cover of dense forests to hide its presence from prey animals. The Candeleros Formation is one of the most diverse known from South American paleontology. A wide range of extinct animals lived here spanning many major groups of Cretaceous animals. While small frogs such as Evita batrachus hopped around the edges of swamps and spawned in warm pools, lungfish such as Ceratodus would have swam by, possibly snatching up their spawn for a quick meal. On the banks of the rivers and wetlands, Rhynchocephalian reptiles a group who today are represented exclusively by the lizard-like Tuatara from New Zealand, would have basked and snatched insects and small vertebrates from the undergrowth. Occasionally, they would come face to face with Cronopio, a genus of insectivorous mammal. This long-snouted resident of the forest undergrowth was more closely related to marsupials than placental mammals but was in fact part of an entirely separate, now extinct clade, the Meridiolestida. All of these small residents of the swamp forests would have needed to keep a watchful eye out for Araripasuchus, a genus of long-legged but relatively small crocodilomorph, often referred to as the rat croc on account of its lifestyle and size. Though diminutive, this relative of modern-day crocodiles would have been more than happy to snap up an unwary mammal or rhynchocephalian, given the chance. Also present in these forests was Najosh, an extinct basal relative of modern snakes that had not yet lost its limbs. Dinosaurs are also widely known from the Candeleros Formation, represented best by the diverse selection of theropods unearthed at the site. Aside from Giganotosaurus, the formation is best known for harboring Raptor, a slender, long-snouted dromaeosaur with many tiny, sharp teeth lining its mouth. It was roughly the size of a spaniel, and its gracile form and lack of long teeth point towards a lifestyle chasing down small, fast prey items that it could swallow whole. Abelosaurids were present here too, in the form of the Acrixinatosaurus, 
one of the other large theropods of the Candeleros formation. This was a distant relative of Carnotaurus, the famous horned flesh-eating bull from the late Cretaceous of South America. It is thought to have grown to around 8 meters long at most and likely hunted medium-sized dinosaurs and reptiles. Also known from the region is an Alvarisaur, Alnachetri, a member of a bizarre family of animals that may have been the dinosaurian predecessors to modern-day anteaters. With their long snouts and oversized claws, these little theropods would have possibly broken into insect nests to consume the arthropods within. The second largest group of dinosaurs at the Candeleros formation is the sauropods, the almighty long-necked dinosaurs so synonymous with prehistory. We've mentioned Limesaurus already, but also present here was the titanosaur Andesaurus. It was basal, but it was thought to have been one of the largest of all dinosaurs, with an immensely long neck and tail. When fully grown, it would have feared few animals, but Giganotosaurus may have been able to overpower an injured, young, or elderly individual. The remaining named sauropods at the Candeleros formation, like Limesaurus, were Rabacosaurids. They included Ryosasaurus, a smaller, shorter dinosaur that held its body in a much more horizontal pose than the Titanosaurs, and the lesser known Nopscospondylus, identified only from vertebral bones from its back that have since been lost. The Candeleros formation is not especially known for harboring a wealth of Ornithischians, but they did exist here. An Iguanodont is known only from footprints, going by the name Bonaparte Ichnium, but the only concrete specimen known from solid remains is Jacopil. Those who follow paleontology news will know this name. It was only described in 2022. It was a little basal thyreophoran dinosaur, related distantly to the armored ankylosaurs and the plateback stegosaurs. It would have resembled a bipedal version of the former in life. Giganotosaurus and its immediate relatives are members of the family Carcharodontosauridae. This translates into English as shark-toothed lizards on account of the dinosaur's sharp, slicing teeth. Carcharodontosaurids are characterized typically by their immense size, making them some of the largest terrestrial predators ever to evolve. Other discerning factors about these dinosaurs include their wrinkled tooth enamel, a premaxillary body taller than it is long, and rugusidae, those tough, abrasive exteriors on the lacrimal and post-orbital sections of the skull. These dinosaurs evolved in the early Cretaceous period, around 154 million years ago. This makes Chikonotosaurus a relative latecomer, appearing on the scene at the end of the late Cretaceous. Only the Tyrannosaurs and the Spinosaurs rivaled them in size, Giganotosaurus was also one of the last Carcharodontosaurids in South America. By the late Cretaceous, Abelosaurids such as Carnotaurus had begun to take over the continent. As for dinosaurs within the family, they were a diverse group of theropods with some particularly famous faces. Giganotosaurus's closest relative when using the cladogram created by Canale et al. in 2022, was Mopusaurus, a reasonably famous carnivore that lived in the late Cretaceous of what is now Argentina. It preceded its larger, more famous relative, having existed between 93 and 89 million years ago, and was unearthed in the Huincul Formation at Canadon Delgado. 
This meant that it would have lived alongside the monumentally huge sauropod Argentinosaurus and possibly preyed upon its young. It's the structure of the femur bones that have led scientists to believe that Mapusaurus was Giganotosaurus's closest known relative and is therefore being placed within the subfamily Giganotosaurinae. Perhaps the most well-known dinosaur outside of Giganotosaurus within the family is its namesake Carcharodontosaurus. This genus thrived from roughly 99 to 94 million years ago in North Africa, where it shared the land with the infamous Spinosaurus. Carcharodontosaurus saharicus, the type species, was thought to have measured a massive 12 and a half meters in length and weighed in at over 6 metric tons. Like Giganotosaurus, its teeth were curved and serrated, perfect for tearing through the flesh of medium to large size prey items. Studies into the jaw and neck structure of this dinosaur helped scientists to understand just how strong it was. It shared its Cretaceous home with the sauropod dinosaur Limesaurus, a 15-meter-long herbivore that is thought to have weighed over 800 kilograms. Scientists were able to discern that it would take two Carcharodontosauruses to lift the weight of a fully-grown Limesaurus, making it one of the most powerful theropods ever to live. Elsewhere in the family is the iconic Acracrocanthosaurus, a gigantic theropod who inhabited the early Cretaceous mudflats of what would one day become Texas. This dinosaur is famous for its abnormally long neural spines, running along its back to form what would have in life looked like a stunted sail. Several theories have been put forward as to the usage of these spines which range from fat storage, display, communication, muscle attachment points, and temperature control. Other dinosaurs closely related to Giganotosaurus include Tyrannotitan, from the early Cretaceous of Argentina, Concavenador, a bizarre South American predator with a hump-like projection on its back, Neovenador, from what is today the Isle of Wight off the coast of England, and Maraxes, which shared the Huincul formation with the aforementioned Mabusaurus. All of these dinosaurs would have been apex predators in their respective environments, presiding over their ecosystems with razor-sharp teeth and immense sizes. So that's a rundown of the life, discovery, habits, and evolution of Giganotosaurus, one of the most immense and powerful dinosaurs ever to walk the Earth. To this day, it has inspired paleo art, writing, and has even found itself a place in popular media, making history as a component of the most recent Jurassic World film, Dominion. Today, we can look back on this animal not only as a triumph and hope for amateur fossil hunters, but as a marvel of evolution that we are lucky to know about.